One of the main reasons why I strongly advocate on this channel that the average retail investor will be better off putting their money in the S&P 500 instead of buying individual stocks is for this very reason that we are going to talk about today. The main reason why I say this is because what most people do, they find a finance channel, finance guru on YouTube that has somewhat above 50,000 followers. And what they do is once they find that person and they determine that they like that person and they like what that person's saying and they trust that person, well, they fall into this thing where the average investor that watches these channels begin to follow their stock recommendations slash advice. And they even go as far as paying their hard earned money to be a part of these fake gurus stock clubs where they can basically, <laughs> it's the craziest concept ever. You're paying money and losing money just to lose money. You're paying 50 to hundred dollars a month or $300 a month, whatever it is. These guys are charging $300 for their course just to get their stock pick recommendations that will most likely significantly underperform the S and P 500 case in point. You are probably better off just taking my advice, which isn't advice, not financial advice, but my, uh, my, my strategy of putting your money in the S P 500 reason why I say this, look at what we have today. Paul Gabriel with everything money who first of all, extremely cringe for a number of reasons. I mean, I don't really have to elaborate too much. Just watch his channel. You'll kind of get the idea of what I'm saying. Paul with everything money, who, by the way, also called himself at one point, the LeBron James of investing and is so arrogant. He thinks that him as a YouTuber is smarter than anybody else in the wall in wall street or in the stock market finance world. Right? So Paul with everything money, for those who don't know, uh, I believe last year he did something very stupid. He shorted Nvidia stock and he got wrecked really bad and he continued to get wrecked. And whenever people would ask him about it, he would say things like, yes, I'm still short Nvidia. Do not follow me. Blah, blah, blah. Matter of fact, let's hear from his own mouth. Here we go. It is very risky. I am down a lot of money. I'm okay with it because my short goes until June or December of 2025. And I just feel like this is in their after hour move right now. Yeah. Um, I am short NVIDIA. Do not short NVIDIA along with me. It is very risky. I am down a lot of money. I'm okay with it because my short goes until June or December of 2025. And I just feel like this is a company that's been a lot of hype. It is up year to date 230%. Before, so here's the mistake he made. Okay, number one, he already pointed out that Nvidia is up 234 percent year to date. Some of you guys might think that, oh, well, because this stock is up so much and I think it's overvalued, it makes sense to short it. Not exactly. It's not that simple. You see, shorting is actually very complicated, very, very risky, and definitely not something I would expect to see from a value investor. Remember, these guys branded themselves as value investors. They're a lot more traditional and safer and conservative when they invest than the average YouTube clown. At least that's what they marketed themselves as. But if that's the case, why is it that they have a day trading course hosted by a guy named Mustafa? Why is it that Paul Gabriel is shorting stocks like NVIDIA one of the hottest tech stocks probably in the history of the stock market. And not only did he short it, <laughs> he did naked calls on it. <laughs> like he took it way beyond. Like he did something extremely risky in his effort to bet that the stock price would decline. And what do you think happened, guys? Well, if you look in this video, when Paul shorted NVIDIA, well, I, I think he actually shorted it before this, but we'll just use this video as a reference. In this video, when he said that he was shorting NVIDIA and he was down, NVIDIA stock was at $494. Anybody want to take a guess at where NVIDIA stock is now? Let's go ahead and look at NVIDIA's stock price, okay? Jesus, oh my heavenly Lord, okay? The thing is up. 63% in the past six months. 
The thing went from $494, which is when he openly admitted that he was short the stock, all the way up to $696. Do you know what that means? That means Paul lost an insane amount of money. If the stock just went up like 20, 30% from there, he'd be in the hole. The stock went up tremendously from where it was when he first started shorting it. And this is why I advocate for what I advocate for. This is why I say you have to be careful listening to these YouTube clowns. Now, some of you guys may say, but Echoes, Paul said that you should not follow him in that trade. So even though he lost a lot of money, you know, he didn't advocate for people to follow him. So you should still trust him. Here's why you're wrong. Paul is consistently showing you that he is a bad investor. He doesn't know anything about finance. He's a real estate guy. He's a trust fund baby. He did not make money on his own. He inherited a lot of money. And now what he's doing is he's gambling with daddy's money and he's losing it all. Now, let me go ahead and show you what happened. It got to the point where this man lost so much money, his brother came and said, all right, bro, you got to stop. Close your short. You are getting killed. You are wrecking Papa's money that he gave us. And he literally admits to this. Let's take a look at this unlisted video that he's got. Here we go. Mexico is a good long-term play. I agree. You should have listened to Mo. He always says that markets only go up. You're 100% right, Scott. <laughs> Guys, my, my short, I exited my shorts because I, I had to deal with my brother. One of his, once it hit a certain level, I was exiting and we hit it and we exited. And that's that. Onward and upward. I screwed up. It was a bad, bad play that I thought would work out. And uh, oops. All right, move on. Onward and upward. It's, it's funny. So he admits that it was a bad, bad play. And he also admits that. His brother basically came to him because, you know, he has a brother and his dad gave both of them money. And, you know, because he comes from a rich family, his brother literally came to him basically and said, look, bro, you got to stop. You you are like uh, like and do you know how much money you have to lose for your own brother to come and say, OK, it's time to close this. Like we're going to lose the entire thing. It probably probably already lost the entire thing. Actually, I'm almost certain they lost everything that they originally put. They probably just lost even more because of the stupid way he decided to short the stock. So it's funny how, you know, he admits that he, that he screwed up, but he also tries to, you know, kind of play it off and act like it's no big deal and all that. But clearly it's a big deal because your own brother had to come to you and say, you got to stop this. You got to get out of this. It's, it's crazy. Here we go. It's way less stressful now after absorbing the loss than it was hearing my brother every single day going, the market's up, the market's up. It's like, okay, I'm not blaming him. It was my fault. It was 100% my fault. And I'm actually paying him back for, the, for, my, for his loss in the short. Oh, that yeah. Jesus. Talk about just gambling your family's money. Again, this is the guy you want to take stock advice from? A guy who's squandering his family's money? Embarrassing his father's name? This guy, this guy took his family's money that he inherited and gambled it on Nvidia, on shorting Nvidia. Got absolutely smoked. And his brother said, "Okay, not only do you need to close this, you need to pay me back because you took my money." And did this stupid thing shows you well enough how terrible an investor he is. Let me do one more thing before I close the video. OK, right here are all of the stocks that Paul Gabriel talked about on everything money. Further adding to my point, how just awful of investors they are. One of them is Walgreens. Walgreens is down 38 percent over the past year. Walgreens is also down 67 percent over the past five years let's go look at another stock alibaba is another stock that everything money talked about alibaba is down 25 percent over the last six months 34 percent over the past year 57 percent over the past five years let's look at a few of their other stocks you got intel intc stock price intel Okay, Intel's not too bad, but but five-year chart, and if I'm not mistaken, I think they started buying it kind of around where it is now. So maybe they broke even, maybe, but the bottom line is they're not up too much in that stock. 
But that stock is definitely one of their better performing ones. Okay, let's go look at the other one. Let's look at this one. Smith and Wesson. Smith and Wesson. Okay, Smith and Wesson did good. 1% year to date, but it definitely didn't do terrible. Bottom line is most of their stocks are not doing too well. Let's look at another one. PayPal. PayPal was another stock that they talked about. I remember that. PayPal is down huge. PayPal is down 28% over the past year, 40% over the past five years. Let's look at one more and then we'll cut the video. SNBR sleep number is down 70% over the past year, 77% over the past five years. Folks, I'm not hating on this man. I am telling you what it is. This guy does not have a legit finance background. This guy does not know what he's talking about when it comes to stocks. They need to change their name from everything money. Because for you to go on the line and pretend that you're a value investor, but then you short one of the biggest hype stocks and also just overall great companies in the entire stock market and get your butt absolutely handed to you because you're so stupid. I just don't understand why anybody would follow somebody like that. Obviously, this guy's not a good investor. And this goes beyond making a mistake. This guy didn't make a mistake. He did something unbelievably stupid. He tried to do something that he didn't even understand what he was doing. He doesn't understand shorting stocks, how to short stocks, indicators for why you should short a stock. He just said, I think it's overvalued. I'm shorting it. Really stupid. Really, really stupid. Okay. This guy's a clown. Do not follow him. Don't buy a stupid course. It's unfortunate that guys like this are even allowed to exist on YouTube. They're such unbelievable clowns, but that's just what it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.